All right, we're on Miyako Shores shortly after the hurricane. Look at that surf. It's so, the tide is so far out, but this is insane. I mean, I, I was just at Tebajima experiencing the biggest waves of my life, but these are seriously, these people up by the beach were telling us not to come down here, but we did anyways. I don't think this video is going to do justice to these waves though. Oh well. That is a big wave. So is that. How's it going? <clears throat> um, I told you that I would update you for my last video, so I wanted to talk more about my farm. I'm having trouble uploading these videos, though. Uh, for like the past three days, I keep trying to upload, and you can see here, it just gets stuck at 1%. This morning, I, I tried uploading again, and it, it said that there was like 9 thousand something minutes remaining so I canceled that and I just uploaded another one um, hopefully my next vlog will be able to upload I don't know why it's not working um, the internet here is pretty good so yeah we'll see what happens with that but uh, continuing on where I left off uh, after giving you the tour of Matsumoto-san's farm <clears throat> um, yeah, Matsumoto-san, um, he's a good guy, he's super kind and friendly like all of these hosts are and uh, he actually, he's he's got a really interesting story. Um, anyone that's friends with me on Facebook may or may not have seen the post that I made about uh, the concern that I had for the, the radiation affecting the world because it is, and, um, you know, I'm concerned for my health many times when I'm here. Well, uh, the reason that <clears throat> it's interesting, or Matsumoto-san's story, is because he only uh, about a year and a half ago was living in Tochigi, which is um, an area very near to the Fukushima Daiichi Prefecture, and, um, yeah, he... He was like an engineer there. He um, he would like test welds and stuff for Honda. He had a pretty good job, and um, he realized that the government wasn't being honest, and they he didn't feel that they were doing a good job. So um, somehow he came across this opportunity. Um, he found like a business partner, and they wanted to start up an organic farming operation here in Miyakojima. And so he decided to quit his job and totally change his life. So he brought his wife, his daughter, and son down here. And um, <clears throat> they started up their tropical fruit farm and uh, sugar cane on May of 2012. So this has been a really cool experience um, just hearing what he has to say about all that as well as the fact that he's like new and learning still as I'm going um it's it's awesome because I feel like uh I'm taking part in something that's very important and you know the work that I'm doing today is going to have an even stronger impact on the farm tomorrow more so than it would like a well-established farm, some of the places that I've already worked on in previous vlogs. Um, he, yeah, he moves here in May 2012, um, grows bananas, papayas, pineapple, passion fruit, dragon fruit, sugar cane, and uh, I think that's it. Um, it's real interesting, like, the, the terrain here, the climate, it's 
all very harsh. Um, like I showed you, like you just saw, um, the typhoon totally screwed up everything. I mean, the banana trees, I've never seen one before this, but they're very, uh, it's not a strong tree. It's like, it's like, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of like soft tissues and you can cut into it very easily. Uh, the trees that you saw in a pile, I was picking them up by myself and moving them. Um, they're not that heavy. <clears throat> and they their roots don't root well at all. So combine that with the strong winds here in Miyakojima and you have a recipe for some knockdown trees. Uh, yeah, other than real adverse conditions of the weather, um, there's the terrain, like I mentioned. It's, the soil here is like clay. It's really basic. And that's because of uh, the, the whole island sits on top of what used to be a reef. There's a bed of coral underneath this entire island, uh, which is pretty cool because the salt here, I think, is like the most complex salt in the world. Something like 27 different minerals in it. Um, but yeah, like the, the soil is really basic. Um, not a lot of things can grow here and it's it's uh it doesn't hold water well um and uh also to go back a little bit like you you saw giles the man from australia who um i'd like to do like an interview or uh just get his some of his opinions on a vlog here one of these days because he's got he, he's super knowledgeable, like he really knows what he's doing when it comes to organic farming because he grew up on one. His father was a farmer and a, uh, a winemaker. He, he had a vineyard and he made wine and uh, he had a bunch of farmland as well. But um, yeah, like he, he was teaching me all these different methods like um, green mulching for example, which I had experienced in Nagano when I was there but uh, I didn't really know what it was because the the host that I was with he couldn't really speak English well enough to explain it to me but um, it's a way of uh, you you basically if you're weeding um, or removing any plant matter from the soil you got to ensure that you leave the roots there because they've got some vital Macrobial, I don't know, component to them, and it can help. Um, it can help like break down some inert minerals that otherwise would not be able to be absorbed by your crops. And uh, so you just like cut off the tops of all the plants, and you leave the roots in the ground. Um, I'm sure you hear way way ugh, a way better explanation of all that in a later video um but uh yeah like he's he's trying to get that going on a farm um but yeah like the reason i just spoke about all that was because uh as i watch um matsumoto-san in his farm like I, I feel really bad for him like after this hurricane and all his trees got knocked down and we were just having to like replant them and fix up everything it, it just seems really hard I mean uh, I mean he hasn't harvested anything yet he's only been here for a year and a half but he's got some pretty mature trees that um, if it weren't for the conditions and things they would otherwise be producing a lot more fruit than they have I, he's harvested very little um <clears throat> what else and so yeah like I I watch him and like I watch what he does and now that I'm more knowledgeable about these things uh, I definitely think that he should be utilizing these methods sometimes and he doesn't and uh, I I don't know I wish that he did but I'm what do I know I'm learning to um, yeah, there's, you know, I came here expecting it to be 
uh, like super lush kind of rainforest-esque environment where I could just kind of take a walk down the street or trail and, uh, you know, like find a banana tree or something like that. And it's not really like that because of the harsh conditions here. It's, you really only see sugarcane growing anywhere. And, um, I mean, it's so difficult to grow fruit, in fact, that, like, Giles was even telling me, like, yeah, he he just needs to stick to sugarcane because he's not going to be able to profit from this fruit for a long time. And even when he does, it's going to be so small because they're just going to keep getting knocked down and knocked down because this island is subject to such extreme typhoons and weather condition. Yeah, I mean, it's... Um, storms here get like really windy uh, I think a lot of that also has to do with the fact that there's like no structure um, there's no mountains or hills on the island no large buildings to block the wind most of the fruit trees in fact that I have seen are like right up next against people's homes in their front or backyards um, or like right up against another big tree or something that can support it or kind of protect it from the weather. Uh, yeah, like, I, I, you don't see a whole lot of fruit um, just growing that you can go around and pick. Uh, other than that, though, it's... The water here is beautiful. Like, the some of the clearest water... Uh, yeah, today we went snorkeling and it was the best day so far. We've been going in the ocean every day and I think we're going to do that every day because uh, that's Matsumoto-san said that he goes in the ocean every day, which um, that's another thing I think is awesome. Like all the people I've been with so far that live near the ocean. Oh, there's an ant right here on my camera. What the heck? Uh, all the people that live by the ocean so far like really take advantage of that. I feel if it were... Um, myself or like some other people I know they'd get like sick of that but these people really know that and they take advantage of it like you know he's thinking people come to this place to vacation they pay money to come here why would I not go out and enjoy the beautiful nature that surrounds me on a daily basis um, yeah it's really nice uh, and since the typhoon rolled through, I mean, it, it, the water was pretty murky for a while, but these last few days it's been real beautiful, and I guess it's gonna... He, he said that, um, he said that I haven't seen anything yet, so we'll see what's in store. Um, it's real nice, like, I, I enjoy being done with work early, uh... You know, he gets right down to it, though. He, like, he picks us up at 5.45, and we are working at 6 a.m., and he makes sure that we get our six hours in a day. I mean, he, he tells us, though, be sure, like, you take a break and get water. Like, you know, use your judgment and take a break if you need it. If you're getting too hot, don't stay out here and dehydrate yourself. So it's not like he's overdoing it or anything. Um yeah yeah but I mean it's it's great so far really nice um and I feel like the work that I'm doing has um some importance um what else yeah I mean the fruit thing was strange to me cause that was different than I had hoped for, but that's all right. I mean, even when you go to the grocery stores, like, uh, fruit's not cheap, and I thought it would be because we're pretty near it here, but it's not the case. Um, I've been trying to eat dragon fruit because that is something we don't have back home. That actually, dragon fruit is cheaper here than, if, if I can ever get it in the Chicagoland area, uh, it's it's definitely cheaper here, but still, it's not uh, not cheap enough that I'd be like eating a ton of it every day. Um, 
Yeah, uh, another former woofer, actually, this Kuki-san, um, 31-year-old dude, he used to live in Tokyo, he somehow, he was, like, vacationing here or something, and he found Matsumoto-san, and, uh, ended up working for him, I guess, during the time that he's been working here and living in Miyakojima, he met, like, a girl from India or something, and, uh, she was into yoga since then, he's gotten into yoga, and he put in his one month's notice very recently to Matsumoto-san, so he's gonna be leaving, like, right when I'm leaving, um, and going to India to pursue yoga and this girl that he met, so, yeah, Matsumoto-san's gonna be, uh, hurting here, I mean, I hope he's not, but, I feel like he might be. I don't know who else. I haven't seen any other help other than uh, Woofers and Kuki san. Um, feel bad for the dude because he's really nice and uh, life ain't easy for him right now. He's been through some real adverse stuff, but uh, he's real positive about it. I mean, I, I, I said, ah, I'm. I, s I commented on like the loss of his trees after the typhoon and stuff and he said uh, said something like never sorry Tyler um, you know people go through way worse stuff than we do on a daily basis so alright check this out I was taking my vlog I kept hearing this like little bang up above me there's all these geckos that come into our uh, our guest house somehow, but we don't mind because they eat the bugs. The banging that I heard was him shaking his head back and forth, like trying to kill that thing. Like that. <laughs> uh, and those things. They make noise too. You're, you'll hear like a little chirp every now and then. It sounds like a bird. Like you'll think a bird's nest is up above in the rafters of the ceiling or something. And it's actually these tiny little geckos making noise. I don't know how the heck they make that loud sound though. Just wanted to show you that.